Hello everyone. I first had the opportunity to show off Fiddler at the inaugural Velocity Web Performance and Operations Conference back in 2008. And while Fiddler looks mostly the same, it's gained a lot more power. On the left hand side of Fiddler is the old web sessions list. But it's not really the old web sessions list. It has a lot of new features. So let's load some traffic that I've captured to demonstrate some of these features. If you right click in the column headers, you can choose to customize columns. Co column customization allows you to add a lot more information to the top level view of Fiddler. You can show any request header, any response header, any flag that Fiddler sets about the session, timers, so for instance Fiddler keeps track of the time to first byte, the time to last byte, the overall amount of time spent in a session, the amount of time spent DNS lookups, and so forth, and a miscellaneous category. The miscellaneous category contains quite a few options, including the request method, get, post, put, etc. The size of the request completely, the size of just the request body, so you can use this to track how big your cookie headers are getting and things like that. You can keep track of the overall response size, which includes not just the body but the headers as well. You can keep track of connection reuse between Fiddler and the, the client browser or Fiddler and the server. And then there's metadata about image responses, so the dimensions of the image, the number of pixels in the image, the aspect ratio of the image, and the RGB or fingerprint of the image. These latter two are useful to keep track of whether or not you have duplicate images uh, that are slightly resized or otherwise not pixel for pixel identical, but virtually identical, and you can eliminate those. So since we're interested in performance, we're going to keep track of the content encoding header on the response. And this will allow us to quickly see which sessions uh, were delivered with compression. So here's our content encoding category. We're going to move it over here. Now Fiddler's web sessions list has a lot more power around selecting sessions. So for instance, if you alt click in a column, uh, it will select all of the responses, or all of the sessions rather, that have an identical value. So I've just selected everything that was gzipped, or if I wanted to select everything that's not gzipped, I could alt click in an empty column. So there's a lot more power here. Additionally, you can search a column. So you can search on any criteria you want for columns containing strings. You can use normal string operations, including regular expressions or exact matches. And for numeric columns, you can search with ranges. So you can say greater than 5k or you know, between 1 and 10k. Fiddler's inspectors have gotten better as well. When we inspect this PNG file, for instance, you can see in the caching inspector how browsers are going to cache this file. It notes that while there's an e-tag header and a last modified header, there was no explicit HTTP cache lifetime information provided. So the inspector automatically computes the heuristic freshness interval. Most browsers will use 10% of the time between the last modified and date headers. In this case, that's an hour, that's one day and seven hours later. And so the inspector shows you that information. If your caching headers have other issues, for instance, specifying a very header or other value that may cause browsers to misbehave, that information will be shown here. The syntax inspector allows you to view content in a syntax highlighted manner, which can be very useful for many web content types. For instance, this CSS file here has been minified so that it all merges together on a single line. Well, if you're trying to use this, that might be hard to interpret. You can right click and choose format CSS and it will reformat the data so that it's much more readable. This works for JavaScript files and HTML files and XML files as well. And so it enables you to more easily interact with data. Beyond the inspectors, one of the most powerful changes to Fiddler has been the autoresponder. This feature allows you to automatically respond to requests and it has gained some new features since we last saw it. One of the features is the ability to simulate single point of failure. So for instance, if we, want to deter if we want to see how our website responds if JavaScript files are delayed, we can do that by creating rules that will institute a delay of 100 milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds, 
or even result in dropping the connection entirely without returning a value. We can scope these rules to anything containing .js in the URL or apply a more complicated rule. By putting a percentage at the front, we show the likelihood of that happening. In this case, 50% of JavaScript files will be delayed by 100 milliseconds, 5% will be delayed by one second, and 1% will be dropped entirely. You can modify any response you'd like with latency above and beyond. So for instance, if we had a rule that would respond with a 404, we can respond, but we can also add latency. Latency will apply to the rule before its response is processed. So in this case, we're going to set 500 milliseconds of latency. We'll delete these other rules. And this means that any file ending in JS will result in a 404 500 milliseconds later. Additionally, you can use the autoresponder to see how users are experiencing your site in the real world by using the import feature. Using the import feature, we can choose to load for playback a SAS file. When we load for playback a SAS file, what this will do is it will create rules for each previously captured session. And because we've enabled latency, it will apply the same latency values that the user experienced in the field. And so in this way, we can more easily reproduce how our customers are seeing our sites. Everyone in the web performance space knows that using compression is the best practice. What too few realize, however, is that your choice of compressor makes a big difference. Consider this jQuery file, for instance. It's the minified version of jQuery 1.11. And by default, it's served at 38,821 bytes when compressed with gzip encoding. If we compress this file, if we decompress this file, it becomes 95.7k. However, if we recompress it with gzip on its maximum setting, gzip-9, the file shrinks to 33,202 bytes, saving 5.6k just by using a slightly better compressor. But it turns out you can go further than that. Researchers at Google created a deflate compressor known as Zopfli that by trading CPU time for compression achieves even better results. Using Zopfli, now built into Fiddler's transformer, this 33k file drops to 32k, a savings of about 3.3%, just for taking slightly longer to compress. For a file like jQuery, which is served to hundreds of millions of users a day, this can save a tremendous amount of bandwidth. Fiddler's image inspector has improved quite a bit over the years as well. One of its new capabilities is the ability to display WebP files. WebP is Google's new image format that's supported in Chrome and on Android. WebP makes better use of compression than other image types, and now Fiddler can render images in the WebP format directly within the Image View Inspector. The Image View Inspector has also done a lot to show metadata about images. For instance, for ping files, it will show the color depth and format, as well as the number of colors for index formats. It will show information like what the gamma for the file is. For JPEG files, it will show information about whether or not an image is progressive. Using progressive JPEGs is the best practice because they result in both a better user experience as well as faster performance. It will show whether or not chroma subsampling is optimal. So in this case, sampling is not optimal as it is using 444 instead of something like 422. Using optimal chroma subsampling allows the browsers that are using hardware decoding to decode the images more quickly. So if this were 422, Internet Explorer 11 could offload the decoding onto the GPU, for instance. Also shown is EXIF data and information about how many Huffman tables are used for optimizing the image. By using the image metadata, you can learn more about image types. 
you can see, for instance, that this GIF file is animated. It has 18 frames, there's no delay, and it has an unlimited number of loops. You can also find opportunities for optimization. Amazon optimizes their images in JPEG format, but presently does not optimize the images in PNG format. So you can see that this image, which is 14 KB, has 990 bytes of comments that were generated by Adobe ImageReady, the tool used to generate the image. That's 6% of the image size wasted in metadata that should be stripped out. The Image View Inspector is now extensible, so you can plug in additional tools that make it easier to understand what's going on in a given image. For instance, for this PNG file type, I've plugged in PingTweak, which is a tool that shows information about PNG files. So you can see that information broken out into more uh, comprehensive list, as well as a tool called Riot Optimizer. Riot Optimizer is a very cool tool for image optimization. It allows you to understand what would happen if you changed a given image. So in this case, we started with a 13.89K image in PNG format. And if we were just to change this to an optimal 256 color palette image with the default compression options, we can shrink this 13K image down to 10K. Now 1K of that almost is coming from those bytes we saved by not having to use this metadata, but some of that came from just using better defaults in terms of the color depth and so forth. Riot Optimizer is very cool because it shows you what you can do visually without actually changing anything. So these two versions of the image look identical to me, but the one on the right saved almost 4K. One of the biggest investments I've made in Fiddler is interoperability with other tools and platforms. There's now an alpha mono version of Fiddler that allows you to run Fiddler on Linux. It's a pretty complete port, including a script engine based on C-sharp. So you can do most of what you can do in Fiddler on Windows on Linux now. Technically it runs on Mac, but unfortunately the WinForms framework on Mac isn't very good and it's not very stable. I'm going to continue to look at what I can do there. However, beyond just running on other platforms, there's more and more ways to get data into Fiddler. One of my favorites is its support for packet capture formats. So on the file menu, you can choose import sessions and you can import from a packet capture. So we're going to load, for instance, this packet capture, which is a packet capture captured between an Xbox and the Grand Theft Auto servers. It was captured by a router. So you can see the, the game's use of HTTP in Fiddler. There are other opportunities as well. For instance, I captured some data earlier today from my Windows phone. I did that by making my computer a hotspot using a free virtual router tool and then pointing my phone's Wi-Fi settings at it. So this data was captured from my Windows phone. There are 79 sessions that were loaded out of that. So you can see that as I typed in my Windows phone address bar, it started to auto-complete the URL that I finally went to. But there are some other interesting requests as well. For instance, this request, which appears to be going out to some sort of optimization service run by Microsoft. There are some interesting headers. So an ATT device ID, so I'm on AT&T, and this is presumably the identification of my HTC phone, as well as information like my CPU is on ARM and so forth. So even if someone is collecting data using a tool that isn't necessarily your tool of choice, like Wireshark or Microsoft Netmon or Microsoft Message Analyzer or TCP Dump on the Mac or something built into their router, you can grab that data and shove it directly into Fiddler if it's HTTP traffic and view it just like you're accustomed to. This works quite well, but there are obviously some limitations. In particular, because Fiddler can't run as a man in the middle, it can't decrypt secure sessions. But if the traffic is HTTP, you can very easily view it. You're not limited to importing packet captures, however. You can import data from other formats, including HTTP archive format exported by Chrome and Firefox developer tools, the F12 NetXML format exp 
supported by Internet Explorer's developer tools uh, or the load test format from Test Studio, a Telerik product. One of the more interesting importers is the ability to import data from curl. So curl is a command line utility for sending HTTP requests and curl command lines are often used to describe APIs. So this API call, for instance, uh, would log this user into his Google account. If we copy this to our clipboard from a page describing it or clip any other source, we can choose paste as sessions and Fiddler will generate a virtual session which represents that request. We can then actually issue that request by just tapping it and clicking R for reissue, choosing that option from the replay context menu, or by dragging and dropping to Composer and issuing through that mechanism. Curl export is also available, so if we wanted to take any traffic that we had and run it through Curl, we can choose export and choose curl script. This will generate a batch file that calls into curl. You can export into other formats that are important to professionals as well, including the HTML5 app cache manifest format, the HTTP archive format, raw files, a web test for Visual Studio, a WCAT script for load testing, and anything else that you can write a plugin for. So the ability to get data in and out of Fiddler is better than ever. One of my favorite examples is if you're looking at a CSS file that contains an embedded image and you wonder what that image is, you now really easily find out. Copy it to your clipboard, go to Fiddler, choose Paste as Sessions, wham, there it is. If on the other hand, you've got some image that you would like to convert into a data URI, you can just right click on it in the image inspector and choose Copy as Data URI. It's not limited to images though. You can pick anything you'd like and choose copy response data URI and it will generate a data URI containing the data from that response. So Fiddler more than ever is able to interoperate with the tools and techniques that you use on your sites every day. I hope you find these new capabilities interesting and please let me know if there's other things that you're looking for. Thank you.